Okay, test drive time. Um, I've just had my first spin on the boat. We've just taken the boat uh, out to, I'll make sure that's, you can see me there. Just taken it out to sea, done a quick blast around the coast uh, from Manly around North Head to Shelley Beach. And this is the sort of place you could come on a boat like this with ease um, on a nice day. You know, when the wind and conditions are right, come here, drop anchor, go surfing. Like, how good is that? Um, and that's just what I love about this category of, of boat. You can do so much more with these things. You, you don't have to be limited to all the traditional destinations or activities like everyone else. Um, you do whatever the hell you want to do. So I'm just gonna navigate my way around these uh, little surf waves here and there's a bucket load of swimmers in the water and divers under the water. So just try not to chop me one up today. I'll um, go slow till we get, oh, there we go. There's a guy just popped up there. Yep, no worries. I won't go near you. Um, so once we're in the safe water, I will wind the speed up just moderately and then we'll really get it going once we are clear of all the dangers. Um, what's my impression so far? It, it's, it's, this is a capable hull. This thing, I do think it's overpowered with these twin 300s. I, I really don't think you need them. I mean, hell, <laughs> who, who doesn't want the biggest motors possible? So it's fun, it's awesome, it's lively, it's not necessary. You, you could get away with the twin 225s, no problems. Power to weight ratio on this thing must be amazing. Like it, uh, 2,650 empty plus engines and fuel. You know, we chucked about 300 litres of fuel on this morning. You know, that's quick. When you compare to some other cutting bow boats, um, what their displacement is, this thing's going to move. Like, that's a hell of a lot of power, the twin 300s. So, yeah, well, we'll test it. We're going to have fun. It's not necessarily a must-have on, on this boat, in my in my opinion. Um, uh, what else am I noticing? Um, you know, she, she's going up into the waves. Well, we're about to see that. Um, she cuts in. She, she keeps you comfortable. Throws a little bit of water over the bow, uh, but you know we are offshore, and they were short and sharp waves. So any cutting bow design is going to do that. Um, in the open, flat stuff, she really gets up and boogies. Down waves, same thing as well. Um, I haven't found the need to use the trim tabs so far, which on, you know, my experience on other cutting bow designs, I'm always on the trim tab. So whether that's just me and the fact that I've only had five minutes driving one of these or whether that's a design element, I'm not sure. So we'll, we'll find out. Um, but before we get going, for those of you that don't have any experience with cutting bows or haven't heard me talking about them before, um, well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, but I love this concept. It is, it's not something new, you know, battleships in World War I had cutting bows and, and the, the, the idea has been around for a long time. People understand that, you know, the more you can slice into a wave, the leveler you can keep your platform um, at, at certain speeds and angles and, you know, the more comfortable the ride's going to be. So you do sacrifice a little bit for that. So you will sacrifice some volume in the bow. So you want to tend to focus your um, maybe accommodation or your entertainment in other areas of the boat like we have here um, in the middle or behind me like we do on this design. And But the benefit you get is absolutely in performance and capability. You, you, you get a boat for you know, the equivalent size, you can do so much more, go so much faster, and um, get away with uh, get away with more. You, you can put yourself in situations that in some boats, you, you really could come out second best. Uh, however, on a design like this, you're just gonna belt through and have a lot of fun doing it. Okay, so no surfers out today, but I'm, I'm clear of the divers, I'm clear of the swimmers. Uh, I will need to watch out for whales because it's that time of the year. So if you hear a big bang, um, that could be what it is. <laughs> I'll try and avoid that. I, had, I didn't see any on the way over. Um, as I said, 2,650 kilos light ship mode. These engines, you know, they're probably about 270 kilos each. The power to weight ratio on these new 300s is fantastic. Um, so that's, that's the engines. Fuel, we chucked 300 litres in this morning, uh, and there's myself, Campbell, and about four bags of equipment on board. So that's us. 
and I'm uh, not using the trim tabs at the moment. I may in a second. We'll just we'll just see how that goes. I'll see how the thing feels. And I do have swell on my beam. As you can, it's probably coming across in the camera. We are offshore at the moment. Uh, that, that's a surf break right there. And I've got short, sharp waves coming in on my port beam, which is going to roll me around uh, somewhat. Uh, in terms of the driving position, I'm just going to get the thing up and moving gently. There we go, up on the plane at 11 knots, we're doing 2,750 uh, revs there, and she's 15 knots already. I'm just going to sit it there for now and talk to you about um, the ergonomics and what's going on here. I feel really locked in here. I've got, I can lean back on the central helm seat, feel secure. I'll just wind the speed up a little bit. My transition from standing to seating like this, and this seat will go forward and back. So this is probably a little bit back for me for my little legs, so I'd want to slide it forward for my own personal settings. But it really doesn't matter because I've got a little bit of protection here and here for my bum. And the helm, it's designed by someone who knows what they're doing, it's clearly, because we've got this little indent here, which puts the throttle in your perfect driving position. This is proper race car stuff. So. Your, your, your throttle hand feels good, it feels natural, you, and your, your steering hand is in the right position too. So when you want to get the most out of the boat, the controls feel like they're in the position for you to do it. The other thing is, I'm always like dedicating my steering hand for steering on a high performance boat. I don't want my left hand to be going away to operate thrusters or other devices because really, you can go fast on these things. This boat gets 50 knots top speed or even a little bit more in flat water. And you know, if a dolphin pops up in front of you at that speed, you know, we're making dolphin soup. We don't want to do that. So I want to be able to react and I want my hand in the place that it needs to be in order to react. So having the throttle and the, the bow thruster and the trim tabs all in this little space here in the center, naturally falling where my right hand is, makes perfect sense. And I don't, why, don't, I don't know why more boat builders don't do that in the first place. So here we are, just coming around the corner, I'll wind up the speed a little bit. I'll just keep finishing talking about the dash before I get onto the performance um, and hopefully you'll see the performance coming through on camera. I'm now sitting on 26 knots, but this dash is sexy. Uh, everything's flush screen. That's where the market's going these days. I've got dual SIMRAD displays. It's all glass. So that's touch screen. I can have multi-functions just here. But what I love is we've got a couple of gear lockers here and here. So I, I was already using this before on the drone shoot, put my dead drone batteries in there. I've got phone charging in here. I can see there's some power, so you can put um, phones and charge, plug them into the USB as well. Drink holder, drink holder, hand hold, hand hold. Same as on this side, another hand hold. We're in the ocean, look at this. We're, we're cruising along at 27 and a half knots right now and I don't even feel the need to hold on. But finishing off the dash, I've got the joystick control. You know, yes, you might need that. I don't really see the need for that, but uh, we'll have a play with that in a sec. We've got the engine diagnostics just here, which is a sensible place to put it because we can already put the engine diagnostics on the big screens. So why do we need another screen pointing at us when we can keep all this uh, facing us looking beautiful? All the boat systems and switches just here, We've got navigation, boat lights, bilges, horn, wipers, all blacked out on beautiful switches just here. And we've got a VHF down here and the uh, speaker just there. So in terms of our speeds, we are just sitting on 3,500 to 700 revs as we come in and out of these waves, going down waves and 25 knots. The steering is light. And this thing is just slicing through the waves. I'll just give it a little bit more juice. I am in the ocean. I'm not gonna give it wide open just yet because I'm just new to this boat, but that's beautiful. Oh, yeah, you could, you could fall in love with this. So my, my first reaction is this thing is very lively.
you, you, at speeds, if you give this too much, she's really gonna, she's gonna bank into that turn. So I think the correct way to drive this boat at speed is small steering adjustments and let the boat bank in a bit like a plane and just let it let it follow through oh yeah we're on 32 knots 33 going through waves i'm going to take us into some calmer water in a sec and then really put it through its paces but this just tells me the hull, the 20 degrees of dead rise at the transom, following through all the way under, twin step hull and cutting bow at the front. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and on that point, I was supposed to explain that to you before. Cutting bow, twin step concept. It gives you so many more options, but how does it do that? Well, what you... The science behind it is have lots of boat in the water to soften the ride. You want to be cutting through those waves and soften the ride. But that ordinarily will create maybe a little bit too much drag because you've got so much wetted surface or boat touching the water. So what those boffins do up in Finland is redesign the bottom of the boat and they add air channels. And as we're moving right now, we're sucking air underneath the boat creating bubbles and we're almost like riding on a cushion of bubbles so we're able to drive this thing at a much flatter attitude and get way faster speeds than what you should be able to get basically so here we are we're coming back into the harbor now let's start to put this thing really through its paces it's clear to me at 3,800 to 4,000 revs, we have a cruising speed of 29 to 30 knots. So, that's just super quick, that's amazing. Fuel flow, who cares? If you're asking that question, you're looking at the wrong boat. You know, you're gonna get there so bloody quickly, fuel's gonna be an irrelevant question. Um, but let's wind it up. Okay, so now I'm just hitting 32, 33, 34, 35 knots. That's, the acceleration is, is very good on this. It's faster than what I'm used to, actually. So I'm only on four, I've got so much more throttle. I'm only on 4,400 revs, and I've got 36 knot cruise. I'm going into some light chop and wind, and I've done no trim, no trim whatsoever. So let's just nudge it up. I got, I still got 1,500 revs left. This is, Okay, 37, 38, 39 knots. The acceleration is, Jesus, man. Okay, 41 knots. I don't even, wow. Okay, all right, let's just keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm not even at 5,000 revs. All right, give it some more. Okay, 5,400 revs, 43, 44, 44 and a half. I'm just gonna lower my body position, turn my hat back. This feels like warp speed, 46 knots. No trim, 46, 47 knots, 5,500 revs. Okay, wide open throttle. Now it feels like I've got to do my engine trim up a little bit, 5,700, let's get to 5.9. 47, 48 knots. Jesus, we are freaking hauling. 49, 50 knots, 50 knots, and I've still got control. This, I'm going into the wind. Okay, I'm gonna slow down. I am entering a four knot zone. Woo! Wow! Wow! I just did that. Crikey. That's just so capable. Okay, I'm gonna wait for this ferry to go. I don't think I've had that sort of acceleration on a boat before, except for like a, a ski boat. All right. Let's just do that again. So I was going into the wind then. With a thousand revs left to go, the boat was in control. I was cutting through it. I could manage my turns. It, it's, it, ugh, lost for words. All right, let's do this again. Ferry's out of the way, clear of the four knot zone. Getting the boat up on the plane. Now let's see how quick, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run it down the western channel. So, what did I just learn? 
leave the engines down. You don't need to do any engine trim up until you really are at that plus 45 knots in flat water. The engines can stay down as they are. I'm yet to use the trim tabs. I have not found a, a legitimate reason to use the trim tabs at all. I think this hull's looking after us as, as it is, you know. Um, it would be interesting to try it on some wind chop on flat water, and I think that's maybe where it's gonna come in handy. And, you know, on a, uh, on a windy day with your fat mates sitting on one side of the boat, leaning us, leaning us to one side, that's probably when you're gonna use it as well. Or, or um, very high wind wanting to lean the boat over, that, that might be useful there. But from a day-to-day -day operational perspective, I'm just forgetting about them. There is an auto setting, but, um, doesn't feel like it's necessary. So now we'll just do some sensible speeds. I'll just wind it up to about 35 and let's just do some S turns here. So my visibility is great. So one thing I, I don't know if this is a safety factor or not, but I like these windows because when I turn, what would ordinarily be gunnels, blocking out visibility, you've just got, it feels like the, your sight lines and your picture is just that much more. So they've really thought about this because your driver experience here, I could see everything and it's nice to have this extra picture of visibility. To be honest, when I saw the drawings for this boat, I wasn't sure what the point of that was, but I think I get it now. That's, that's what they're trying to achieve. They're creating a better driving experience through visibility and it has the added benefit of giving you a bit of protection. So that's cool. Um, let's speed this up, continue some S turns and just see how she feels. Oh yeah, this is fun. Jesus. Okay, so I'm just sitting on 37 knots there. Engine's running at 4,500 revs. I got a little bit of, a little bit of swell coming through the harbour, but it's mostly flat engine fully down. Yeah, this is just gliding through it. So, if you've got guests out for the day, if you've got people who, um, of all ages and all abilities or strength of stomachs, I should say, because some people aren't good on boats, I would not be worried about taking them out on the Saxdor 320. They're not gonna, they're not gonna lose their guts over the side, and you're not gonna, even though we're doing ridiculous speeds, I don't think you're gonna scare them. It's, the boat feels like it's in control. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be throwing you um, over the side or throwing you out of your seat. Everybody does feel quite locked in to these bolster seats. So that's from a safety and operational perspective, that's good. Let's just give it one more run of wide open throttle while we're here. Harbour's pretty empty. Okay. 4,005, sorry, 5,400 revs, 43 knots. Jesus, I was already at 43 knots. 5,500, 46 and climbing. Okay, wide open throttle. 46, 47. Now I'm giving it a little bit of engine trim up. That's two degrees of engine trim up. A couple more degrees of engine trim up. I'm not on flat water. I've got a few little waves rolling around me here. 49. A little bit more. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Okay, that's 50 knots. Let's just do a few little turns, a couple of waves. One, two. I'm doing this at 50 knots. Woohoo! Hello. This is awesome. Jesus. Look at the birds can't even get out of the way. Man, this is lunch in two minutes. This is manly to Rose Bay in two minutes. Jesus, uh, I, I don't always get lost for words. I am lost for words on this boat. Um, I've driven a lot of go fast, high performance cutting bow boats, um, and they all have their unique characteristics about them. And I think what I've got to say about this Saxdor 320, this thing is a weapon. This thing is fun, this thing is lively, and this thing gets your heart racing. You know, to be, to be cruising 
to, sorry, to be doing a slow cruise at 30 knots and a fast cruise at 40 knots and still have a thousand to 1500 left in the rev range and blast it over 50, it's, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. Like it's just not something I've really properly experienced before. So that was a hell of a lot of fun. And to, to, to feel controllable at 50 knots and safe, um, and, and to know that your guests are also going to be able to um, sustain those speeds and, and, and not fall off. Um, as long as you make sure your hats are, are secure and your loose items don't blow away, you're going to have a hell of a lot of fun on this boat. So, you know, I, I definitely think these th twin 300s are perhaps a little bit of overkill. Um, so if you're the kind of guy or girl who wants to have the biggest and the best and the fastest, yeah, hey, go for it. Knock your socks off. But you just don't need them. Um, this thing is going to be so fun and high performance with twin 225s. So uh, knowing that it was designed to be a capable boat with a single 300, um, maybe that's not going to be such a popular option in our market. We'll see. Think things and times will change. But um, yeah, to, to to experience what we just experienced then, um, this thing is going to sell like hotcakes. Absolute hotcakes. And, and it already is, but that just proves, proves the fact. Um, anyway, I'm Dan Jones. This is Dan's Boat Life. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you on the next one. Fellas, I have a question. <laughs> I should say ladies too, but I'm watching the analytics and I can see it's actually 100% men watching this channel, so we have some work to do. Um, my question, I've got a lot of drone footage on the 320. I do all this droning myself, thoroughly enjoying it. I'm just wondering, would you guys be interested in seeing some pure drone footage if I just make up a video um, and maybe I can narrate it or stick it to some music, whatever. It seems like a lot of you are quite interested in this boat and want to see how she runs. Hopefully this video explained a lot of that, but maybe if I can um, spend some time, edit up another one, and uh, that might be useful for you as well. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate the feedback. I'm having fun, having a crack. So yeah, hopefully do some more stuff like this. See you soon.